Where we have Peter Vyhansky. He's the vice president over at Data Art. Peter, it's great to have you with us as always Sorry. at Market Site. And one of our favorite conversations: artificial intelligence, machine learning, how it's being applied to asset and investment management, also creating some alpha too. Yes. Yeah, so uh, according to McKinsey Research, by about 2030 we could be seeing an uptick of about $13 trillion in the world economy, boosting world GDP by 16% or so. So it's, it's a very significant and dis disruptive change and it's gonna create a lot of volatility on the way there. But if we take it narrowly, sort of what's happening today in let's say asset management, most talked about use cases have to do with things like alpha generation, risk management, and uh, operational efficiency. For alpha generation, there's an argument that says alpha is going to be very difficult to win. It's going to be microscopic if it's available at all. But some of the experts that we've been talking about, uh, the AI and machine learning and asset management with, uh, have a different opinion. You can actually uh, generate alpha, but you have to be very specific and very unique in your approach, meaning there's a very high competition, obviously, and a very low signal-to-noise ratio in data. There's too much data coming in and more and more every day. But if you know how to look for uh, the right data sets, the unique data sets, and identify nuggets of signal in the ocean of noise, as it were, you have some chance. And also, uh, you have to use your unique and uh, original ideas. If you're relying on tools and algorithms that are available widely to everyone, that's not going to be a winning strategy to, mm -hmm. to, to generate alpha. The other thing that uh, can protect your alpha is agility. You need to have systems that are capable of being changed very quickly. And you need to be able to deploy your algorithms and run them in production in a matter of hours, not days or weeks. If you're not agile, then your alpha is going to be computed away quickly by more agile firms. Now, what about model transparency? Model transparency or explainability of AI. That's potentially a big thing. Now, make things clear, right? There's some things that we don't understand how they work, and yet we use them quite happily. Say, general anesthesia. Nobody knows how it works, but it saves lives, countless lives every day, and so we're happy to use it. And there are some use cases in, and scenarios in the financial services. Let's say if I trade on a signal and it makes me money, do I really care if I understand how my algorithm did that? I don't know, perhaps, perhaps not. But in specific environments, regulated environments, when companies rely on very complex and poorly understood algorithms that are often trained on poorly curated, uh, often biased data sets, that drives decision making that it's not only, that is not only not objective, very subjective, very opaque, it could very well be in violation of regulations and even, even illegal. We're talking about environments such as, I don't know, consumer credit or mortgage lending or HR, right? So we think that boards of directors and shareholders and executive leadership of companies that are relying on AI in those areas should be aware of those risks because they're potentially opening themselves up to regulatory scrutiny, fines, financial losses, or even legal action. Now, what about some of the operational and technological challenges that exist? I would imagine integration is one of them. Absolutely true. So technology speaking, a lot of the cutting edge research and technology comes out of academic institutions, and so it's not exactly enterprise-ready software, so it lacks things like usability or security, and so there's a lot of retooling needs to take place before you're ready to deploy them in enterprise environments. Um, the other thing is that it, it, for performance reasons, that software often relies on specialized hardware like GPUs or FPGAs, and so uh, in order to achieve proper parallelism and operability and portability, you need to do a lot of engineering around that software. Operationalizing it, making sure it's well integrated with downstream systems that are able to consume the output of your ML algorithms and sort of uh, generate uh, functionality downstream and uh, d down the value chain is also very important. It's very, very challenging uh, for most firms. Um, data is another huge area of challenge. Like, so if you're doing AI and ML, you really need to sort of fuse data from different data sets and data sources your transactions, your interactions with your client, your rich media or your satellite images or social media data. So you're connecting the dots across different data sets and data sources that are both internal and external to your organization. In order to do that, you need a very robust and resilient and well-architected data platform that is able to ingest any data from any source, any format, any time, any volume. Many firms are not there with that capability, N not by far, right? So. Um, in fact, 80 to 90% of work in any machine learning project or initiative is this data engineering, data pre-processing, identifying the data, ingesting it, cleansing it, staging it, setting up data pipelines, making it available for your analysts and your data scientists to run their analytics on. And uh, it's, it's very tough. It's legitimately difficult work fraught with many uh, very hard engineering problems. I guess that's why we're so busy. So. Right, well, and, and that's a good thing. And then to wrap it up here, the obvious challenge is people and talent. For there's, sure. There's such a small pool out there. 
Absolutely. I mean, the, the technologies uh, have not been around well enough to generate a cadre of people. You can mm -hmm. just go to marketing and hiring. Try that. Try hiring a, an AI specialist in New York. It's not very easy at all. So um, this AI worker of the future is an interesting combination of software skills, data skills, and also math to understand and design models and algorithms. And, and that's not a very combination in the market today. All right. Thank you so much for joining us at Market Site. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.